Welcome to episode 111, or the Nelson of Let's Talk Geek, recorded on Wednesday, 3 October 2012. In the show, we take a look at the Dark Energy Survey, TypeScript, scripting for JavaScript, and we talk about a bunch of Android stuff. Thank you for watching. Welcome to the show. In the show is me, Jan Vermeulen. And Joining me. Me, Gerrit Vermeulen. Oh, yes. Me, Johan Els. Welcome, Johan. Thanks oh, for joining thank us. Thank you very much. Uh, thank <laughs> you. And thanks for running last week's show. I tried my best. Yeah. But I had, I had good company. That, that made a huge difference. Yeah, thanks, yeah. guys, for joining me. Yeah, thank you very much to last week's guests. It, I don't know if it was a first. No, no, no. We've had two guests before, but, it was, but we've, we've definitely... Uh, like had this was the coolest combination. We had Fried Roadkill in studio with Johan uh, and James from My Gaming, the editor of My Gaming. So yep, we had lots of fun. Yeah, you it guys. sounded like it was a blast. Um, the random for this week is, despite objections, I'm going to like get heavily mathematical anyway. In number theory, Euler's totient or phi function is an arithmetic function that counts the number of positive integers less than or equal to n that are relatively prime to n. That is, if n is a positive integer, then phi n is the number of integers k in, in, in the range, yes. So you know what I'm, uh, I'm not going to explain. No, I actually have no <laughs> idea what you mean. And then the perfect totient number, uh, or a perfect totient number, is an integer that is equal to the sum of its iterated totients. So, relatively prime it is something that needs its own explanation. So, the reason that's relevant is because the number triple one is not only a Nelson, it is also a perfect totient number. <laughs> ha! Yes. So that when you talk. So, apparently, uh, the, the number triple eleven being referred to as a Nelson is named after Admiral Nelson, who allegedly only had one eye, one arm, and one leg near the end of his life which is apparently actually incorrect. He never lost a leg. Um, so it's known as a score in cricket, and there are a few umpires who subscribe to the superstition that if you are on a Nelson, then you need to lift your feet so that the not, batsmen not just don't umpires, go out. batsmen, certain teams, bowlers, players, spectators. So with that, we've got a bunch of events still coming up. So this week... Finally, finally, the events are starting to happen. October is too busy. Yeah, it's Stop too it. busy. So we've got PyCon happening in Cape Town on the fourth and fifth of, of October. So that's um, tomorrow. I, by the way, that's tomorrow and Friday. I, by the way, have heard of a ticket that's available. Um, if you can't get a ticket and you want a ticket, if you're fast enough and you're watching the show live. Then yeah, because it's not going to be up before. Yeah, like um, <laughs> it's not going to be up before the the conference starts. If you're on the watching 4th and 5th. it live, ping Yan. Yes, um, there may still be a ticket available. Then Rage and you're on Cape Town. Well, you have to be in Cape Town. Or be willing well, to travel to Cape you Town. You can fly down to Cape Town. Yeah, you can drive down to Cape Town if you really have that much time. Um, then we've got Rage 2012 happening for yes. some games this weekend. You've been going on about this for months. We can finally take that off the agenda. <laughs> no, we can't. Because <laughs> when it's over, we put on the next one so long. <laughs> well, just, we don't know that. I've just tried to sort out the blog post, but on my website, you can see the photos we took last year. Apologies, these are all taken with smartphones. We didn't have any... Semi cameras. pro or, or pro cameras. We still don't have pro cameras, but we at least have DSLRs. Mm. But, then, if, but if you go back to my site, I'll also put up all the videos from last year. Oh, wow. If you haven't attended. And we have the before, videos from last year up on YouTube. Yes. They're yes. all in the and Let's Talk Geek, but I'll Some just put of the them interviews as well. I remember you doing like a first time hands on With on the, the Asus, Asus slider. Yeah. Transformer slider. I was very excited no, the about slider. That. I was. <laughs> Yep, yep. Then um, we've got the My Broadband Conference keeping us occupied at the office permanently, uh, <laughs> happening next week, Wednesday. This is also relevant in that it's going to cause us to not have a show, apparently, next week, Wednesday. Not apparently, we're not going to have a show <laughs> next week, Wednesday. <laughs> because we're all going to be coming from the My Broadband Conference. And I will gladly invite anybody that wants to moan, come and see us at the conference, have a beer with us after the conference, and moan then. Yes. We'll, we might even record the moaning session or live stream it. We will have the equipment there anyway. So, um, Then we've got IBM Smart Camp. Uh, for those who don't know, we did an interview with... 
um, two weeks back. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, so they are giving startups a boost in South Africa, and they've got a smart camp ha happening on the 25th of October. If you want to participate in that, you'll have to sign up with the IBM uh, with the IBM program for these smart camps. And then we've got ZACon, a security conference yes. happening in at, at UJ. On the 27th. Of October. I've never actually been able to go to one of these. I really want I to go to ZACon. I am very sad about that. Yeah, yeah. I've chatted to a lot of the guys who do the go to Zacon and they say it's awesome and they're awesome guys and it's an awesome con so if you can then um, just once again since we're keeping this on the agenda um, there is one another event happening in Cape Town is a lead up to the uh, SA Discworld event so this is not an actual Discworld con they're building up to hosting a Discworld con in 2014 this is a uh, sort of a, a precursor to that I think I guess to test the water and that sort of thing and then for all of your other geek date needs check out stardates.co.za please do cool if you've just joined us uh, and you managed and you managed it through me rattling off events and trying to teach you what a tow ship number is and you're still with us congratulations uh, you may put a gold star on your geek badge and um, join us live in IRC, irc.ltnet.tv. If you still have an IRC client, if you're geeky enough to have one, irc.ltnet.tv port 6667, hash LTNet is the channel. With that, into the show. Go for it. Cool. Angry Birds come to rage. True story. Uh, Angry Birds is gonna be, gonna have a, a stall at rage. Okay, what but I, I don't know about you guys. I'm Angry Birds out by now. Yeah, I'm, I've played. I'm a, I've most got Angry Birds games. fatigue. Yeah, and I own a plushie. Okay, wait. We just got to add to this. What are they going to do? You're going to be able to donate <laughs> towards <laughs> the wildlife fund, and then throw around. Oh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> throw around Angry Birds at some pigs. Yes, not, not, not real, not real pigs, prizes. I'm assuming. Yes, we'll not, real not real angry birds. We'll see. Is Talco <laughs> going to be there? <laughs> Sorry. Ah. Ooh. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't see you. <laughs> Johan deserved that one. Okay, all right, thank you. <laughs> right, in any case. Anyway, so there's going to be apparently real angry birds, and it sounds like it's going to be a charity drive of some kind. Yes. You give a donation of at least five rand, and then you get to throw... Angry a, birds and stuff. Yes, and you Ex can win prizes, such as the... Uh, what's, it, what's its thing? Uh, prizes include Angry Birds games for PC, plush toys, and sweets. Mm. On that... How do you play Angry Birds on a PC? It's just there's it's there's for Google Chrome. There's for Google that, Chrome, the, yeah, the app and, for Google and, and Chrome, and, and you can. It's not the same. Well, no, it's, it's not, not the, same. the same. Well, I but mean, like you get Angry Birds on Samsung TVs as well. And there's Angry Birds for PlayStation. With as a well. remote, it's pretty much everywhere. I don't know how you play it on a TV. I, I mean, I wasn't even going to try it. So, I know, but I, you apparently right. get you get TVs with motion control now. So the LGs. You, you can play it. No, no, no. Samsungs have motion control, so the LGs probably do as well. You know, I, I'm sure they both have the same R&D team. Because they come out with the same tech every year. Oh, I'm going to get such a stinker of an email from Samsung. That's fine. <laughs> um, so, uh, with that, Microsoft TypeScript. Karat, you put this in the show notes. The JavaScript we need or a solution looking for a problem? Indeed. Uh, um, do you know of the... There, there's, an, there's actually a, a, a journalistic law which says that every headline that ends in a question mark can be, can be answered with an with a answer no. Do that every time you see a headline that ends in a question I've, mark. I've actually done that it's quite a few times. It's hilariously funny. And that's when I stop reading the article, too. It's like in your it's pants awesome. jokes. It's hilariously funny. So is your face. Uh, <laughs> so you we, guys on we should all be familiar with uh, Google Dot. Uh, we spoke about it a while ago when Google actually launched Dot, which is their attempt to fix uh, JavaScript, as it were. So Google obviously writes loads and loads of web apps and fairly complex web apps and they say that JavaScript just doesn't meet the needs that they that they have for writing these complex things and it comes down to tooling um, you know debuggers etc uh, etc et those types of things and so they invented Google Dot and um, people didn't take kindly to it so Microsoft is taking a slightly different approach and for that they have TypeScript so TypeScript is or JavaScript is essentially TypeScript Anything that is JavaScript is automatically TypeScript. And then it has a bunch of extra features in an attempt to make tooling easier and to give you some extra uh, you know, features, uh, some stuff like static typing, which you just don't Would have. Would it work on something but Windows 8? It looks like it, yes. I mean the tools. 
Oh, the tools. Well, if they're written by Microsoft, I'll put my money on no. <laughs> there's, uh, there's nothing in the article about that. Um, but the point being, I think, that, that you can make the spec open. Uh, the language itself is made by the same guy uh, responsible for Pascal, Delphi, and C Sharp, uh, among other things. And so, yeah, you know, if, if you make the spec open, then other people can write tools for it as well. So that might sort of like help. You, like Unity. I mean, um, for those who don't know, Unity is a 3D graphics engine and really more of a game engine that was built on uh, Mono, which is an open source implementation of the .NET, .NET framework. framework yeah. So it's, you code in C Sharp, but you deploy to everything. Uh, everything from iPhones to Linux now. Yeah. So. yeah. so this is their attempt to also get some of that tooling, except it's not as bold an attempt as what Dart is, and again, the reaction is, no, but there's nothing, you know, a lot of people are going, no, but there's nothing wrong with JavaScript. And um, So, really, are they are, are they actually fixing something? Can you code in JavaScript? Uh, I can read it. I haven't coded in JavaScript for a while. JavaScript? Mm -mm. But isn't that the problem? <laughs> well, <laughs> no, I'm serious now. Isn't that, I mean, the, the best adopted languages are the popular ones. JavaScript is fairly widely adopted. JavaScript is very widely adopted. But what I do is... I'm not a web developer. I use... Not okay. in that sense. I use the, the stuff that other people write. So, um, you know, so the jQueries and, I mean, and like, that, some hardcore exactly. coding that goes into that stuff. So there's also a thing developed by the Airbnb cars, guys called Infinity, a very neat JavaScript library that lets you scroll a website to Infinity. Um, so it's like a... So you scroll and then it automatically fetches the next stuff yeah, yeah. out of the history and then... Uh, puts it at the bottom. So if you scroll slow enough, then um, and, and you know, and, and what makes this particularly good is that the um, Airbnb uses very high resolution photos, and so they've managed to write it in such a way that if you've got a reasonable internet connection, then it actually it's almost seamless. So it loads stuff while you're scrolling and reading. Um, now, where does HTML5? I mean. Fit into this whole picture? Is um, it a replacement? Or mm -mm, is it no, they, they, no, they tried dynamic HTML, and that, I mean, JavaScript, uh, look, I speak under correction, but um, the dynamic HTML is around, but um, eventually JavaScript sort of just took, took over. over. Okay. Yeah, I mean, for the client side stuff. So if you've got like rich client side stuff that you want to do, you, you're using a combination of JavaScript and HTML, um, and HTML5 now. And uh, then the server side stuff is done with a server scripting language, server side scripting language. So, yeah, I mean, JavaScript is, is like widely adopted in the browsers themselves. So, there's just no reason to use anything else. Okay, just asking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, of course, uh, with Google's Dart, um, the, the whole idea behind that was that eventually you'd have a dedicated Dart VM to be able to run the language. And TypeScript uh, kind of chucks that out the way. So, you compile TypeScript down to JavaScript. It's just a higher level or a, a new language to represent JavaScript in a better way. Yeah. So you get stuff like static typing if you want it. You don't even need it. Yeah, yeah. Stuff like classes. And where they actually introduce new features, they try and uh, stick to ECMAScript 6, which is the new version of JavaScript that's pushed. Is that even supported in IE? <laughs> <laughs> a good question. <laughs> <laughs> what are the odds that they're testing in IE? Yeah, anyway, so um, I mean, I'd have to look at it first. An interesting to see if idea, it's but isn't this kind of the same thing, just with less ambition uh, as you know, dot, dot or anything else well, that other Google, people have been isn't doing? Isn't the criticism level that Google dot that Google was almost trying to write a, not a proprietary that They version. were doing it on their own. They, it they was weren't doing it in Chrome, isn't it? Well, they were starting out in Chrome, yes. Yeah, yeah. But they were going about designing the language on their own. So they weren't starting off as open. Um, and with standards, you know, with a standards body in mind and where people can just chip in mm -hmm. with their ideas. <laughs> Moving, uh, while Moving we're talking about, talking about Google, uh, everyone's favorite topic, let's start talking about mobile devices. <laughs> we're keeping this short, <laughs> I promise. <laughs> okay, so the One X Plus has been announced. Hooray! Why? <laughs> See, I, I, I love that reaction. That was the that, because my, that first was my first reaction why? as well. I mean, I just got my my wife has, has a One X for what? So this is what a One X looks like, and one when X, you get the One X Plus, this is what you'll see. It looks very similar. Uh, the the press shots. What you can see on the back is the camera with the One X. You have this two color thing, so you have the white over there, and the camera has the silver. From the press shots, looks like um, they've got this HAL thing going well, on. Well, with with the black one from the the one that I see over there, they have a red. Kind of a red thing to it, but there's another one. I'm sorry, one. Dave. Yeah, I'm sorry, Dave. But there's another one that. that it's the same color. 
So whether that's the design they're going for, you know, or, or whether they're going for a same color, I, I think they're going for a same color I design. Did you read something Woo, about so the longest battery life in, in, in ever? Yeah, yeah uh, on I, an HTC I don't device. Know, that'll, yeah, maybe on an HTC device because they're going up against the Razer like Razer Max, Max and mm. the Razer HD okay, Max, so, which have so, same okay, batteries. Along. To land this, okay, what's happening is 1.7 gigahertz Tegra 3 quad core. They've which got supports LTE, which is a big deal because what they for the do, states for, for the states, us it doesn't matter. Yeah, for us it doesn't matter. Um, yeah. For the states, it is a big deal because the one that they had in the states was actually powered by a, a, dual, a, core. a dual core S4, yes, not by Tegra. So the spec bump for the LTE guys, I think it's the AT&T version of the thing. Yeah, it's, so it's exclusive to. Yeah. AT&T. Yeah, to, to us, it's Whatever. not that big a deal, uh, like spec bump-wise. I mean, yeah. we go from 1.5 to 1.7. Then 64 gig internal storage. That's a nice bump. Yeah, it's nice, th 32 to 64, and a 2100 milliamp hour battery from 18 milliamp milliamp hour. Cool. Um, then I guess if we get this device in South Africa, we'll reserve judgment until we get to play with one. Um, with the LTE networks, maybe uh, to segue into that, uh, segue, I'm sorry, James, segue into that. <laughs> um, uh, at the, maybe we should just mention, we don't have a slide for it, but there's a lot happening in the LTE space in South Africa. We have uh, Vodacom, uh, I think in the last week, announcing that it's got LTE plans. We've got... MTN. Um, MTN's already announced yep. them. We've got Cell C announcing or, or telling Tech Central in an interview that they've got out, they're going to join the LTE fray. And we've got all the other guys, Internet Solutions, MWeb, all those guys saying, hey, listen, we want in as well. Please make an open access network. Even Cell C has asked for an open access network. Um, so LTE, you know, even though the government has not released the spectrum, the, the networks are pushing ahead just so they have that checkbox. Um, and this is a rant for another day, but I want, I'm wondering out loud how big a deal LTE really is. Uh, now if they can just sort out the backhauling. Sure. Uh, I was in Porch two weekends ago. I had an HSDPA H plus connection on my phone with zero throughput. Yes. So it doesn't help you get these LTE connections to the towers and there's no backhauling. Mm -hmm. They've uh, got to sort that out. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, okay, Saffron, by the way, on back to the HTC One X, has briefly also mentioned fixed wireless. Uh, for those who don't know, the HTC One X really had Wi Fi problems. Yeah, but that uh, was also with okay. a certain, but with what, uh, early batches as well. Yeah, far yeah. As I so they fixed so that. So later so batches, no one had a problem yeah. anymore. Anyway, yes, so, um, uh, uh, yeah, just a reminder as well that ATA is also, uh, MTN and ATA were actually the first two networks who announced concrete LTE plans. All the others were like, yeah, we're playing with it, we're trialing it. Um, MTN, I believe, was the first network with a concrete concrete, uh, you know, closed, but like at least somewhat public trial, as in publicly visible trial, even though the public couldn't participate. ATA said that they've got solid plans to launch LTE in 2013. Um, and then uh, Vodacom came out and said they're going to launch in 2012. And um, Cell C's CEO, Anna Not Craig, said uh, they have to launch in 2012 because everybody's running towards it now. But it's, um, I'm just I, wondering I argue that it's, that it's almost nonsensical. This is just a checkbox. Without proper spectrum, um, I'm wondering what this is going to do to devices and the kind of radios that they're going to put in there. And then eventually, when we do move over to the right spectrum, what's going to happen? Will those devices be usable yeah. anymore? I do want to. Um, I mean, that's one thing I really want to check in the, uh, about the Nokia 920. Um, and perhaps Lumia. it's. I mean, it's a worthwhile. It's a worthwhile question for an article down the line. Um, is the Nokia 920 apparently supports? like all the LTE bands, basically all the ones that I, I could think of as relevant, 800, uh, 1800, 2600, which is what we care about in South Africa for the moment. Um, and obviously a bunch of others that we don't care about in South Africa. And um, so that's interesting. That means that if you buy Lumia 920, you're pretty covered. Mm. Um, Unfortunately, if, you'll be running Windows if, Phone. you know, that spec is, this is in every Nokia Lumia 920 and not... Uh, these are the specs we'll put in some, but not all, of the Nokia Lumi 920s. I don't know what that spec sheet means, so um, d I will have to get clarity on that. Um, on to another mobile device is the Nexus 7, now Woo! in South Africa. This is on this guy. Yep. We've spoken about it at great length before, so I don't want to dwell on it too much, but recommended retail price is 3,000 Rand for the 16 gig version. Only the 16 gig version will be brought in officially, I hear. How's that pricing? Not bad at all. I okay. whoa, 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 whoa. No, stop. That's not bad. I'm reading your article where you're comparing Nexus 7, Samsung Galaxy Tab 2, 7-inch, and the Kindle Fire. Yes. Well, not the Kindle Fire 2, or HD. 
No, that was but the Kindle Fire before the Kindle Fire to the second Kindle Fire. When did you write this article? Long, long time ago. That's why. 8th of August. A long, long time ago. Okay. Yeah, that's not that long ago. It's long enough. US price for the Nexus 7, 16 gig, $200. Okay. Yes. No. No, no sorry. It's $250. You're not putting in sales tax there. You're not putting in shipping. Okay. You're not putting anything of those things in. Calc. But still, you can, exactly, you can still. 250 uh, times. 8.5 times 1.14. You'll still come in just over 2 grand. Yeah, that didn't work. Oh, okay. uh, let's get off X. <laughs> Major fail. <laughs> You're uncalculating in hex. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Two four two two point five. Two and a half. One four times eight. Eight point five. Okay, but now you're not calculating any kind of shipping cost. Okay, so dude, they it? get it. They don't get it at two hundred and fifty dollars. They get it at a wholesale price. Yeah, maybe. Not maybe, but dude, if, if I ship it in. I'm going to be paying more for that. I ship this 8 gig in for over 3,000. Yeah, okay. That's relevant. Over 3,000. So that we can okay. compare. Yeah, that we so can compare. agent or directly? Uh, I had to kind of wangle my way through. So not, uh, I couldn't order from Google directly. I had yeah. to ask someone. To so, I mean, while that doesn't say that the price being charged right now is fair, what that says is... Three grand is not a bad price. If you try to do it yourself, you are going to pay more. That from personal okay. experience. Yes. Okay. That's right. the bottom line. Unless you can, like find a way to skip sales tax skip shipping completely so if you have a friend in the u.s who can get you one in a sales tax free environment which is simply not possible uh and he can fly it he's coming to south africa you might be able to save some money to do it that way mm -hmm. and he doesn't get caught by customs all right so i did want to quickly except you probably won't have a warranty with this one you still have a one-year warranty yeah one in south africa um it's not a bad price I, I wanted to quickly mention, I say quickly all the time and we never go through them quickly, is that um, a topic that was covered last week that I feel we do just have to give the update on is an Android vulnerability, which it initially was, looked like it was linked to TouchWiz. Mm, um, it looked like a Samsung it vulnerability. It looked like a Sam Samsung bug and it still is kinda. All right, so um, the, the vulnerability is in the Android dialer itself in the way that it handles special codes that look US. like USSD yeah. codes. They aren't necessarily USSD codes, yes. but they look like USSD yes. codes. And the Samsung device format code looks exactly like a USSD code. Star 258, it's not exactly this, but star 2585 star 3267 hash. Uh, it's not that code exactly, but that's the format it, it takes. Mm. Um, mm. So other special codes have the format star hash star hash some number hash star hash star yes and then they automatically execute right um, and i've tested that on the htc one x and those automatically executing codes they automatically execute Ooh. so all i did was i i invoked the tell protocol in an iframe on a very basic website open it up in this thing's mobile browser i tested chrome and the default browser um and chrome by the way the first time it doesn't it doesn't run but when you refresh the page Sure as nuts, it runs. Um, but those codes, those codes, star hash, star hash, I haven't found one that can damage the device. It can launch some menus and stuff. There's nothing you can do to yeah, format that, the device. That depends on the phone, on, mm. the, on the main phone. And HTC have told in. me that they don't have any format codes of that form that people can execute. Samsung have remained very quiet when I asked them about the issue. Um, so it looks like if you do not have a Samsung Galaxy X S3 updated to Jelly Bean, or at least the very latest version of 4.04, your device is is actually um, vulnerable to this attack. And it's really just an inconvenience if you've kept your device backed up. But yeah, it's pretty if major inconvenience. Yeah, if you want to protect yourself, install an app like Viber, which can, which has its own dialer app. Or and set it as your default. Or a, no, not as a default, or a third-party dialer. Oh, okay, so that pops up with a menu. Or there's somebody who like um, wrote an app called Talblock or Tal Intercept or... Say again? Lookout. Look, okay, and apparently Lookout Security protects against it, does it? Okay, the mixer says Lookout Security apparently protects against it. Um, I'll have to check against that. And so uh, what it does is it intercepts the tell protocol okay. and, and then it pop, uh, not look out, but these other ones, intercept the tell protocol and go, hey, which of these apps do you want to run this with? Um, so yeah, just wanted to give you an update on that. I've had, I've had since the story of last week, there's been four updates to my phone. So, and it's been Wiz updates. And you've, so got, a, you've got a Samsung Galaxy S3. I've got the no. S3. And it's, not, it's been Wiz updates, not OS updates. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. I'm sure so it this might is be already, that they've probably fixed it. It's already fixed. I'm what sure. I'm worried about is the older devices that are getting no love from Samsung at all. 
Um, and they're not unique in this. There are lots of manufacturers out there with old devices Aero, that are Motorola, doing no love. HTC, LG. Yeah. I received a report this week that Motorola have yet to update their Motorola Razr to ICS in this country, even after saying that they're rolling out the update. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's a rant for another day, perhaps. So, on to something awesome, which is the Dark Energy Survey. What is this? Okay. So... Um, I'm just going to go off the fast code design article I quickly read today. Um, I haven't been able to look at this in depth. If I look at it, oh, it might, yes. it, you know, it might be even cooler than I thought it was. But it's a 570 megapixel camera meant to unravel dark energy's mysteries. So, who says megapixels doesn't mean anything? Yeah, uh, <laughs> megapixels megapixels doesn't mean anything until you talk about 570 megapixels. Is that retina quality? <laughs> <laughs> so this is awesome, and um, it's. It, Did you read the whole story about this thing? Yeah. Uh, what it, apparently what it's meant to one of the things it's meant to explain is why the universe, the expansion of the universe, is actually accelerating. So it looks really cool. No, what did you fact, see, Johan? Uh, the fact, I, I, not this, what you've got in the show notes. Apparently, this thing is already outdated. They're building a bigger one. <laughs> I love They're it. physically already building a bigger one. Mm. I mean, this thing is just the amount of CCDs in there. And the pictures that's pumping out on the other side. Uh, I'm sure they put one of these pictures on that megapixel site, which I stitched together, and you can actually keep on zooming forever. Oh, okay. into so space. It's, yeah, like XKCD's comic. Yeah, keep scrolling. Yeah. So, uh, yes, awesome, awesome telescope. Yeah, yeah. I want well, one. Uh, well, they're calling it a camera. I don't. I mean, I don't know if that's entirely accurate, but. It's it's massive and awesome, and what it's doing is awesome. So, how's that calling it a camera? <laughs> I don't know. That's that's what they called it. It's a it's a telescope with a big camera attached to it. Oh, come on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Five hundred and seventy megapixels. How many? How many? How many? How many pixels is that across? <laughs> it depends on the resolution. Square it just just square it. No. Then you'll get an idea of so many by so many pixels across. No, that's just no <laughs> overflow error. Yeah, hold on. <laughs> I need to get back to science mode. Yeah, Johanna's about to do a Pythagoras 570. If that's a, if, assume zeros. 16 by 9. 1, and, 2, 3, 1, and 2, and 2 3. And work backwards from there. And square it. 23,874 pixels across. Square root. Root. Yeah, it, sorry, not square it, it root. It the, square root. The, it depends on the aspect ratio. 23,000... <laughs> quite awesome it's good stuff <laughs> huh it's good stuff how many how many gigs of google storage would you take up with these photos <laughs> oh boy <laughs> divide mm. by no let's not no, no, no let's just go there it's just getting and they're probably taking them raw uh. <laughs> <laughs> of course you need to adjust the exposure afterwards okay in any case sorry <laughs> which brings us into our kicker um, this is something. This is a really short show. Uh, this is something I. Well, I did tell guys that it's short because we have to put our legs up, or we have to lift our lift our feet at least. It's the Nelson show, and um, so and uh, something cool that I that I picked up from uh, one of the South African devs. His name is Rogue Rogue Code, I think, on Twitter, and he got a thing up on Thingiverse. Rogue Matt. Rogue Matt, yes. So um, he's got Thingiverse, yeah. Yeah, he's got a thing up on Thingiverse. He's calling the ultimate catapult, almost, and uh, in brackets siege, and uh, it's it's a build your own catapult with a three D printer. So thing, oh, Thingiverse, okay, there we go. yeah, Thingiverse, Thingiverse is a website dedicated to putting the specs for things that can be built by three D printers up. Yes, that's so what they do. So you, you can go there, browse for stuff, and get the specs for it. Push oh, it into your files, printer. Yeah. Like yes, yeah. the actual files. Push it into your, your 3D printer. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they usually say which 3D printers they support, and you, you'll just have to check the format to make sure your printer supports it. Might need to scale it down a bit and hack a bit, and then you can print it. So you can literally print your own, in this case, catapult. Catapult. Thingiverse has blocks. a ton of stuff. It's, yep. It has a ton of awesome stuff. I would never stop printing things. Yeah, if, you're a 3D, if you have a 3D okay. printer, there's um, no reason to not just keep your batch full. The original made this to shoot the two by two centimeter catapult cubes. Yes. That's the cubes. So how big is this whole thing? So 
There we go. You can oh, see the relative such a size. Good, it's, it's a, a desktop. Desk, yeah, it's a desktop, desktop catapult. Toy, yeah. So, so you're sitting in your cubicle, and you want to have some <laughs> fun. <laughs> cubicle wars. <laughs> Um, yeah, so, and what's really cool about this one is it doesn't just print it, it prints components and you have to assemble it. So it's like a little, it's like a little toy that you buy. And have to assemble. It's really cool. So, Some assembly required. So well done to Matt. Uh, I, I hope it does well and I can't wait for version 2, which he says is already in the works. Is already working on improvements to his catapult. So you know where it breaks. He uh, uh, said that the improvements are to... Uh, make it more efficient, I think. So, yeah, um, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. With that, we should totally get House for Hack to print up a couple of these. A catapult, yes. absolutely, and then have a competition of some sort. We'll need mini Angry Birds. Those uh, can be arranged, or at least Lego Men. I have a tiny pig. <laughs> Key rings. Yep. Yeah, one of those. Key rings. It's going to be great. <laughs> And I, was going to, I wasn't going to talk about pumpkin chucking. What's There's, pumpkin chucking? Uh, the Americans, once a year, they've got pumpkins chucking. Okay. Uh, so that's part of Halloween. Is it, no, is it like no, cell phone no. chucking? No, the no event it's like pumpkin Finland. chucking. So you've or got Sweden. catapults, you've got um, uh, air cannons, you've got... Uh, um, what's the other... You've got the catapult, and what's the other one? The siege... Trebuchet. Re trebuchet. 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 And then you've got human-powered catapults. And then there's a junior division as well, and they see how far you can chuck a pumpkin. pumpkin. It's a big thing. Cool. Sounds Many awesome. Many hours of coverage on Discovery uh, Science, Discovery Science Channel. You know, you should know when to just turn off the TV. <laughs> no, but that's just fun to see these guys <laughs> get excited about throwing a pumpkin. Well, it's actually about building the trebuchet. Let's yeah, that as well, yeah. And then you get to love something that goes block yeah, at exactly. the end. <laughs> they've, got a, no, they've, got a, they've got a saying for that. When it comes out and it goes, pumpkin can buy. Pumpkin pie. That's when you've a lot, your, 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 what, your uh, acceleration was too high. It actually ends up as pie. But in any case. Cool. So with that, thank you very much for joining our short Nelson show. Tell us what you thought about the shorter format, if you liked it, hated it. Um, if you want longer, come and join us before and after the show when we yap a lot afterwards. True story. Um, about, about other nonsensical things that we might not be too comfortable having put on the internet. Um, so with that, I'm Jan Vermeulen. You can find me on Twitter at Jan Vizere, on Google Plus, Jan Vermeulen, or on my broadband most of the time where I write things and do other things too. Joining me in the show was... Me, Gareth Vermeulen. You where can, can people find you? Find me at about.me slash hawky ZA. And? Johan Els. Where are you? Who dash Els, that's here to ZA. Cool, which you've already plugged someplace earlier in the show, I believe. Yes, I just get people photos. to watch I've rage also, photos. I've also got the videos up there. So all the videos we took last year, they're all on the blog. They're all there. Cool. Thank you for watching. Join us for the next one. And remember, no show next week, but there will be one after that. That doesn't mean there's not going to be any broadcasts, though. We are live streaming the My Broadband Conference yep. on, Let's yep. Talk Network, on Let's Talk Network with the help of traffic. Um, I think I've got that the right way around, right? That's fine. We're going to cool. all work together and... So uh, we're going to be at Rage this weekend as well. Yeah. So catch us on Saturday if you can find us. You can come talk to look us. Look at our new T-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> look out for those. <laughs> Thank you for watching.